Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to give you a presentation on Shui gas field. 17 people worked together to create this PowerPoint presentation. Here are the names of the team members. The Shui gas project is a large-scale natural gas project stretching from the Bay of Bengal in Myanmar to Yunnan province, China. Operated by South Korean and Indian developers, it's the country's largest extractive resource project in terms of gas and oil reserves, potential revenue, and the number of people affected. Now, let's know the project details of Shui gas field. Here we can see, status, operating, operator, owner, parent. Let's take a look at the ownership of Shui complex field where we observe that, POSCO International has the highest ownership 51%. The lowest ownership is 8.5% owned by both Gully, India and Korea Gas. Moving on, Discovery Year. Production Start Year, 2013. Basin. Concession, Block, Blocks A1 and A3. Next, we are going to discuss, the Shui Gas Project is located in Blocks A1 and A3 in the Bay of Bengal, Offshore Rakhine, Myanmar. The water depth in which the fields lie ranges between 85 meters and 140 meters. The three fields are together estimated to hold 4.5 trillion cubic feet of gas. Here, location of Shui is marked and pathway of oil and gas pipeline are showed by blue and red color respectively. Now let's know, different phases of Shui gas project. The first phase of the Shui gas project included the development of the Shui and Maya North gas fields. A total of eight production wells and one condensate well were drilled. The Maya gas field was developed through two subsea drilling centers and four production wells. Produced gas from the field is transported to the platform through a 12.5 km long, 14-inch diameter gas pipeline. The Shui platform transports the produced gas through a 110 km long, 32-inch diameter export pipeline to an onshore gas terminal comprising a jetty and hangar at Kyakfu. Next, Phase 2 development of the Shui gas project includes the drilling of four production wells including a satellite well and a five-slot manifold at the Shui field. A 2.5 km long, 12-inch diameter infield flow line and umbilical will connect the subsea facilities to the existing Shui platform. At the Shui Few field, four production wells including two satellite wells will be drilled and a six-slot manifold will be installed. Finally, the third phase of the project will include the installation of a new compression platform, which will be bridge linked to the existing platform. Modifications to the existing platform will also be carried out as part of the project. The phase 3 is currently in front end engineering design, feed, stage, which is expected to be completed in the second quarter of 2020. To tell about production from Shui Complex, we know that the Shui Complex conventional gas field recovered 37.67% of its total recoverable reserves, with peak production expected in 2022. Based on economic assumptions, production will continue until the field reaches its economic limit in 2039. The field currently accounts for approximately 33% of the country's daily output. Here, the tabulation of Shui gas field production volumes and values given properly for quick look. Now, take a look at this figure which describe Myanmar gas sale and development timeline vividly. Shui complex conventional gas field reserves accounts 0.13% of total remaining reserves of producing conventional gas fields globally. You must be curious now to know how much profit Myanmar make. All information are given here. Let's discuss the Shui gas movement position where 45% of the Burma regime's current export revenue derives from sales of gas to Thailand. If the Shui gas project goes ahead, it will provide the regime with up to US$29 billion over 30 years, and would further entrench the dictatorship. The profits from the Shui gas project enable the regime to continue abuses and escalate regional security threats. The over 1,100 km long pipeline from Kyakfu to Kunming would cut through Arakan and Shan states and densely populated areas in central Burma and lead to abuses against people and environmental degradation in the pipeline corridor. Through the partnership with the Burma regime, the project stakeholders risk complicity in these human rights abuses and environmental degradation. Burma's oil and gas resources are being exported while a majority of the people has no electricity. Growing anger against unjust projects and abuses against the people has led to grassroots demonstrations and could lead to expanded conflicts between affected people, the regime, and foreign corporations. 
The Shui gas project must stop until the people of Burma can exercise their human right to participate in and benefit from the extraction of natural resources. Some of the key contractors involved in the Shui complex project as follows. Design, Feed Engineering, Baker Hughes, Doris Engineering, Hyundai Heavy Industries Holdings, and McDermott International. Now, let's look at a glance at the important information about Shui gas field. Here, details of Shui gas field and pipeline are given there. Moving on the regional setting of Shui gas field. Shui field has located in the Rakhine Basin offshore northwestern Myanmar in blocks A1 and A3 near the shelf slope break, in 100 meters of water. Shui, Shui few, and Maya fields consist of Pliocene aged turbidite sands deposited. Principal source of sediments is the Bengal fan to the north, northwest of the Shui field. Uplift of the Indo-Burma range and mass wasting of the shelf to the east. The Rakhine shelf comprises an Eocene to recent aged accretionary prism formed by subduction of the Indian plate beneath the Sunder plate. Thrust faults form a series of northwest to southeast striking fault propagation faults. The Shui field is located between the Shui and Nagwe anticlines, where the reservoirs are found on the western flank and crest of the Shui anticline. You can see now the location map, Shui, Shui field, offshore Myanmar on your screen. Furthermore study on regional setting, we get to know that. Four cross sections were constructed. Two strike sections parallel to the Shui anticline. Two deep sections extending from the flank to the crest of the Shui anticline. Pay sands in the Shui field occur in two reservoir series, the G5.2 and the G3.2. If we study cross section 1, we see, three distinct correlative lobes are interpreted. GA5.2A, is interpreted to pinch out to the south. Lobe GA5.2C, which is gas bearing, extends across the entire cross section. A gas water contact for this lobe can be seen in well Shui 6. G3.2 series sands from well to well represent bypass channel levy deposits. The channels in the southern part of the cross section are wet whereas those in the central and north portion of the section are mostly gas-bearing. Mass transport deposit resulting from a shelf collapse to the east just below the G3.2, green event, above the GA5.2, blue event. A large debris flow deposit demonstrating that debris flows are present near the Shui field. However, red event, large slump feature can be seen on the southern end of the seismic line. In cross-section 2, we can observe that, cross-section extending along the crest of the Shui anticline from Wells Shui 2A in the north through Wells Shui 5 and 5A to Wells Shui 1A and 1 in the south. Lobe 5.2C is seen in Wells Shui 2 to be pay-bearing. Lobe GA5.2A and GA5.2C are interpreted to pinch out to the south. Lobe 5.2C is seen in Wells Shui 2 to be pay-bearing. The god seen on the seismic profile may trap the gas in lobe GA5.2C, preventing it from migrating to the crest although it is considered more likely that lobe GA5.2C pinches out between wells Shui 2A and Shui 5 such that the gas is stratigraphically trapped. Most of the channels are pay-bearing although several wet channels are observed in wells Shui 5 and 5A. Next, cross section 3, is a deep cross section. Extends from the flank to the crest of the Shui anticline from Well Shui 3 in the southwest through Well Shui 5A to Well Shui 5 in the northeast. Three correlative lobes have been interpreted for the GA5.2 series on this cross section. Lobe GA5.2A is observed in Well Shui 3 and is inferred to pass below Wells Shui 5 and 5A. The GA5.2 lobes B and D are observed in Wells Shui 5 and 5A but were erosively removed by the G3.2A gorge. Moreover, in cross-section 4, we see, extending from the flank to the crest of the Shui anticline from Well Shui 6 in the southwest through Well Shui 1A to Well Shui 1 in the northeast. Dash dot. All four GA5.2 lobes interpreted on cross-sections 1 to 3 can be observed on this cross-section as is the gas water contact for lobe G5.2C seen in the Shui 6 well. G3.2 channels on this section are gas bearing. Structurally low G3.2 channels are wet. However, not all of the crystal channels are gas bearing. Finally, let's try to interpret a Shui field depositional interpretation.
The turbidite reservoirs of the G5.2 series are interpreted as having been deposited on the abyssal plain at the toe of slope and these reservoirs tend to be correlative in a number of wells indicating deposition in fan lobes. Correlations indicate the presence of at least four separate fan lobes sourced from the northwest and shingled in an east-west direction because of avulsion. The G5.2A, B and D lobes are wet and the G5.2C lobe is gas-bearing. The oldest lobe is the G5.2A lobe, which was deposited on the western flank of the Shui anticline. The fan system appears to have owls to the east, depositing the G5.2B lobe on the crest of the Shui anticline. 5.2b, the GA5.2c lobe owls back to the west, the north and western margin of the GA5.2c lobe was subsequently eroded by the G3.2a gorge, the youngest recognized fan lobe is the GA5.2d lobe which appears to have again shifted eastward over the crest of the Shui anticline. The G3.2a reservoir is interpreted to be a submarine incised valley, gorge, that cut down into the G5.2 reservoir series. Moving on hydrocarbon distribution, we know, at the G5.2 series reservoirs, four individual lobes have been identified of which only one is pay-bearing, G5.2C. G5.2C lobe is not the structurally highest lobe yet it is the only pay-bearing lobe. Stratigraphically trapped to the northeast by the pinch out of the lobe. The trapping gorge could be the G3.2A gorge but it is considered more likely to be the blue gorge seen on cross section 3. The G3.2A gorge is also pay-bearing, indicating a stratigraphic trapping element that prevents northwest migration of gas out of the reservoir. Looking at the G3.2 series sands, some channel levy reservoirs are gas-bearing and others are wet, including channels seen near the crest of the Shui anticline. Since these were deposited as a series of meandering channels in the bypass section, the predominant control on the distribution of gas will be the orientation of the meander loop. Meander loops that cross the structure with the horns of the meander loop pointing down deep can trap migrating hydrocarbons. Meander loops that cross the structure with the horns of the meander loop pointing UP deep will allow hydrocarbons to migrate UP deep and be lost as will channels oriented parallel to the deep direction which will not seal. However, the Shui Natural Gas Project faced a lot of criticism with its Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA, not released prior to the start of construction. It was also criticized for not allocating sufficient gas for domestic use in Myanmar. Critics alleged that the project's pipelines pass through ecologically sensitive and residential areas, including rainforests, parks, rivers, marines and sanctuaries. Human rights activists opposed the Burmese military's acquisition of land in the Gaon Chewan, Thit Pate Tong, and Sabasha areas to make way for the pipelines without providing compensation for the local population. Fishing was banned in the area by the Burmese Navy, affecting the livelihood of local fishermen. These are the references from where we collected information and figures. If this video seems helpful to you, please subscribe our channel. See you in our next video. Thanks for watching.